We find ourselves in Arkham Asylum where psychotherapist Dr. Benjamin Arnell is talking to the Joker. You see, Ben wants to be the first person to diagnose and cure Joker's madness. But Joker simply laughs at his idea, remarking that all of this doesn't matter since no one can bring back the hundreds he's already killed, and tells him that his actions are driven by ego rather than concern for others. His colleague, Dr. Marie Hutchins, reviews the footage of the session and asks if the Joker might be right about Ben's reasons for seeking a cure. But Ben explains that if he can cure Joker, they could develop a model to help other patients with similar psychosis. I'm afraid I'm not going to recommend extending your treatment of this patient. His colleague informs him that he has two more weeks left with Joker because she's afraid that... Two more weeks, Ben. I won't risk losing another young mind to that animal. Ben gets frustrated but assures her that two weeks will be enough because he feels so close to finally understanding Joker's mind. He then returns home to his family. Daddy's home! He hugs his son and watches his wife order some food. Hey, that's mine. Happiness. Laughter. Yes, laughter most of all. That is true beauty. He puts his son to bed and begins to read him a bedtime story. A story about a happy, happy place called Happyville and a character named Mr. Smiles, who killed everyone. Jesus. Ben asks his son named Simon where he got the book, but the child tells him that Ben was the one who gave it to him. Ben is shocked as he can't remember doing that. While his son starts crying and pleading for him to read more, Ben simply kisses him goodnight and wishes him well. You okay? Yeah, I just... You've been off all week, Ben. What's going on? Nothing. It's nothing. Just work. Tired, I think. His wife then expresses her concerns about Ben and his stress levels, also mentioning her fear of the Joker, who constantly manages to break out of prisons. Ben reassures her that she has nothing to worry about, so she kisses him and they go to sleep. But when Ben closes his eyes, he sees a balloon. And that's when he wakes up to a sound coming from his office downstairs. Hello? Is, is someone down there? Ben, what are you doing down here? Ah, uh, nothing. I... It, it's okay. Just checking something in my office. Go back to sleep, baby. What? Sleep? Ben, it's almost eight. What? No, I just woke up and... Ben gets confused, but his wife informs him that they have no time because they will be late for work. And that's when we see Ben talking to the Joker again, discussing the time the Joker managed to trap a group of people underwater with fish that had creepy smiles. But the fish... How did you do that? A magician never reveals his secrets, Benji. They then start talking about Joker's early life, and Joker asks Ben if he wants to know more about the place where he came from. Ben says that he does, and Joker tells him that he comes from a happy, happy place called Happyville. That is, until Mr. Smiles came to town. <laughs> ben quickly goes to the bathroom, still puzzled about how Joker could have possibly known about the book in Happyville. And that's when he notices something. He decides to open the door and finds... a dead man. Ben is shocked and slips on the blood. But then... What the hell, man? He realizes... All of this was just an illusion. You see, Ben, after Mr. Smiles came to town, Happyville wasn't so happy anymore. <laughs> after this, Ben's mental state clearly deteriorates. He begins having strange dreams about Arkham's inmates and Joker, highlighting the profound impact the Joker has on him. No, stop! Ben, are you okay? I, I'm... What is it? What's going on? Is this real? What? In the morning, Ben's son, Simon, is watching the interactive tale of Mr. Smiles on his phone. He also tells his father a joke about a clown, but Ben gets angry and tells him to go put on his shoes. When Simon tries to go downstairs, Ben quickly grabs his hand, instructing him to never go near his office as there are things there he shouldn't see. There are two worlds, and this place, this place sits at the borderline between them. Morning, Doc. Good morning, Harvey. Sleep well? Not really. I was up half the night. <laughs> mm. 
And that's when Ben meets with Joker for another session. Ben tries to find out what scares Joker, but Joker starts to talk about the world's sickness and insanity, claiming that humanity is the one that can't live in reality, not him. Ben then asks Joker about his first encounter with Batman, to which Joker describes Batman as his true and only soulmate. But that's when Joker shifts the conversation by asking Ben about his wife, Anna, and his son, Simon. How did you know? How do you know their names? His colleague rushes in with a guard to stop Ben. She then tells him that it's clear Joker is trying to get into his head and advises him to relax. However, Ben responds by saying that he'll need more than three weeks to cure Joker. Three weeks? Ben. It's already been. A guard interrupts them, and she quickly advises Ben to take a day off before rushing away. When I step inside Arkham, I step into the other world. I know this, and when I come home, I leave it behind. I cannot allow it to bleed over. I cannot allow the other world to touch this one. See, can you pass the salt? See. Ben starts hallucinating again and realizes he needs answers from the Joker immediately. How did Joker know his wife's and son's names, and how did he know about Happyville? Clearly in a terrible mental state, Ben quickly gets up from the table and rushes to his car. His family tries to stop him, but... Be careful, Doc. Get up. Ben arrives at Joker's cell and begins shouting, demanding to know how Joker acquired information about his family. He insists that he never mentioned their names during the three weeks of treatment. But that's when Joker reveals that the treatment hasn't actually been going on for three weeks. Because Ben has been treating him for three years. No, but that is not the best part, Benjamin. I know Anna and Simon's names because you told me months ago. No, stop you it. You told me Please. right after Anna left you and took your son with her. <laughs> and that's when Ben discovers that every day he spent with his family was merely an illusion he created for himself. Anna! He rushes back home, only to find it empty, and then he realizes that... There are two worlds, but what happens when you no longer know which one you're in? Knock, knock! Who's there? Boo! Boo-hoo. No need to cry. It's only a joke. <laughs> only a joke. <laughs> ben returns to Arkham, but this time he has a plan. He knocks out the security and makes his way to the Joker, he starts beating him, demanding to know what he did to him. But Joker simply explains that it's not him. It's the world. The madness of society and its people has finally led Ben to see the absurdity of life that the Joker has always perceived. <laughs> ben starts crying and tells Joker that he has managed to broke him. But Joker once again blames the world grabs Ben's face and tells him that it's time for revenge. The alarm goes off and security rushes to the prison, but it's already too late because following the Joker's instructions, Ben has already freed all the prisoners. Joker then gives Ben an address where his family is living and tells him that's where they will begin. Once he was free of the magic castle, Mr. Smiles decided to throw a party for his new pal, the sad doctor, and all of his friends were invited too. The crocodile man came, and so did the scarecrow, and even the man with two faces. They all hacked and slashed and gouged, and the party was a big success. But some people wanted to ruin the party. Freeze! They wanted to ruin all the fun. And the sad doctor knew what he had to do. Bang! Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Smiles took the sad doctor's hand and led him to the greatest place in all of Happyville. It was a magical place, filled with toys and games and laughter. The sad doctor needed laughter most of all, and Mr. Smiles knew how to fix everything. He knew just what to do to make the sad doctor happy again. But now it's time for another story, and this one is about a very, very bad man. A man who wanted to ruin everything in Happyville. The bad man's name was Mr. Pouts. And all Mr. Pouts ever wanted to do was make the laughter stop. 
Batman shows up and starts fighting Joker. He screams at him, demanding to know what he has done to the doctor. But Joker grabs Batman and quickly instructs Ben to run to his family. What have you done to that man? Oh, this is a good one. A long-term project of mine. Joker then informs Batman about the doctor and his family and challenges him to choose between saving them or capturing him. <laughs> And that's when we see the doctor wearing a clown mask. He breaks into his wife's apartment through the window. And upon seeing her, he immediately points his gun at her, shouting that she's finally seeing the real Ben. His wife breaks down in tears, begging him not to shoot her, but Ben remains unmoved until... Daddy? Their child enters the scene. Ben tells us that Joker showed him that the happy place he once knew no longer exists and that it was never meant for him anyway, because the Joker revealed to Ben who he truly is. I failed. I fell. I lost. But I won't let him win. I won't let him poison everything. I see now that there is one thing that can never be taken away, no matter how far we fall. Hope. And I won't let him take that too. And that's when we see Ben talking with his colleague, but this time, Ben is the one sitting behind bars. Ben says that he regrets everything that Joker made him do, while his colleague tries to calm him down, telling him that Joker is simply a disease that corrupts everything it touches. Joker used me and now he's out there in the open. And if he really is a disease, then what do we do when it starts to spread? The only thing we can, Ben, we wait for the darkness to pass and we pray that hope is enough. <laughs> <laughs>